Itemization, Lacoste, do you have any ideas what Slark's buy nowadays? Shadow Blade is probably going to be one of them. Yeah, Silver Edge is Silver good Edge. against the Bristleback, of course, but uh, I think he needs a mana item, so Echo Saber will be yes. really good for him, like because he's playing against the double mana burn. And I've seen Medusa or Nyx Assassin being counter, especially when Medusa hits level 15, to tanky heroes like Tide Hunter. You pop one snake, he doesn't have mana for Ravage. Yeah, well, we can jump straight into game. Boys, take it away. Game two, TNC against NIP. Thank you very much. Yep, Gareth, everything on the line now for NIP. Now more than ever, if they want to make us the playoffs securely, they have to win this game. And they got to do it quick. Of course, if OG win their game as well, then that means it will come down to the time coefficient. So, Ame and Tim's up here in the top lane, spinning in circles. Look at it go. Wow. Well, now, one well. thing they could have done is put Slark on mid against Medusa. I don't remember who played it, but it was so good. Medusa got destroyed. You get Orb of Venom, you jump on her. Every single time Pounce is ready, you go. You max Essence Shift and just steal her, steal her stats. I feel like that was a miracle, but I can't remember. But you're right, it definitely, it definitely happened. Armel starting off with the Mana Snake. No surprises there. I mean, if you want to have a lane, that's what you got to do. Meanwhile, Gabby up in the top lane, coming forwards. Bristle starting with plenty of Mangoes, plenty of Tangos. Oh, they might be actually doing it. Ace is running mid. I uh, just checked DP's uh, items. She doesn't have any shared Tangos. No one actually has shared Tangos this game. Or do they? 33 has. Okay, <laughs> not, not who we expected at all. Yeah, and... Uh, yeah, Armel does have Shad Tangos. Medusa has Shad Tangos. So, 33 headed to the mid lane right now, blocking with the trees, and it looks like they're waiting to see, or not. 33, sending in the treants. Yeah, looks like uh, looks like he's staying in this mid lane. They just killed the whole creep wave on top with three heroes. Well, they want to play this fast, huh? Yeah, they're already hitting the tower with the first creep wave, so... You could say they're playing it fast. Um, that, that would not be a lie. Now Fado arrives in this lane at last on the Death Prophet. She offers them a decent amount of counter push with the Crypt Swarm, but not really a level one. <laughs> I don't think anybody has good uh, counter push. Yeah. Slark had two great lanes to go to. It was against the Batrider or against Medusa, and they decided to put him against Batrider on bottom. Also has Dark Pact level one, has Magic Stick to work with. See, Root coming out onto Cuckoo as uh, Ace and PPD try and take control of this lane. And well, yeah, it's, it's, it's probably going to be pretty rough, but at least Cuckoo can always get that uh, right click advantage on the creeps, at least. Screw himself some nice CS, but does have to be careful. The Root, the Essence shifts, it can be a powerful combo. There comes the root out onto Cuckoo Ace. He's uh, he's, he's not he's not going to follow up on this one though. He's uh, just waiting on that Tim's nice with the double impale here, and now the Firefly is actually being popped onto this right now. Ace is trying to right click him, but they're looking for PPD. PPD will finally land into the fire here. Now look towards Ace in seven. It's actually the Tabarad who's getting really low. Cuckoo having to fly away. Ace kind of trapped in the flames right now. With that impale inside the fire, that oh. is going to be first blood. Beautifully done by Tim's. Nyx Assassin grabs the kill. Next Assassin just got level 2 from that creep wave and skills uh. mana burn and gets the first blood. A little bit of a misplay from PPD. They don't need to play that aggressive on the bottom lane. He used Fortune's End aggressively instead of uh, just saving it when they uh, try to go on Slark. Have you seen the CS? 6 and 0 on the Medusa. Sorry, 4 and 2 on the Medusa. And uh, Prophet is 10 and 13. 33 is literally just here to deny creeps. Although, with that snake able to couple, scoop up a couple of treants, they didn't get much gold anyway. Uh, he brought two null talismans, has fairy fires for some extra damage, and treants. <laughs> and 33 was always a player who has a good uh, micro skills, uh, always played that Broodmother. Uh, yeah. I remember even Lycans when he was playing uh, a carry. Uh, he's, uh, he's giving an RML a bit of a showing up here. Well, a root in the bottom lane once again. PPD just keeping him away from the creeps. Ace trying to have a peaceful time, farming himself up. They need this slug to have a good game. Meanwhile, up in the top lane, Bristle. 
He's just farming himself away. Doing, just taken to the top of the net worth chart. Fada not really able to come in for much here. Nine and zero currently, waiting for the creeps to come under the uh, tower and doing a best CS. But Armel getting pretty low here. 33 up onto the high ground. He's leveled up Sprout, getting in the tree. Can he get the blocks? They're looking pretty good right now through the trees. Armel on the run. Does he get the right click in? Yes, he does. And that is first blood going to 33, tearing open this middle lane. It's second blood, but okay, very nicely done by Nature's Prophet. Uh, he's gonna hit level five, and now they have uh, this global threat from Nature's Prophet. Has TP ready if they want to commit to? So TNC should be careful about uh, over committing too much or trying to dive a tower. Thirty-three again, just coming back into lane and immediately just trying to trade here. But with that haste tree, he's actually getting a lot of his mana taken away as Cuckoo, well. Cuckoo, he's dead. Ooh, it's Cuckoo in the bottom lane. That's the third first blood we've had. <laughs> PPD is level three with two points in Purifying Flames. They should be careful about uh, playing too aggressively. Also, Slark has 1-1-1 one, one, one build, so he can keep them in place, cancel the TPs with the Pounce. Nice pull, gonna kind of drag their creep wave back a little bit. So not, not an insane amount of aggression, but this Arcane Rune may be coming in on the mid lane here. Our Melt, a level three Oracle, and it's gonna be a lot of damage coming through onto this Medusa, and the right clicks will be coming in. 33 grabs another one in the mid lane. Meanwhile, Saxa, he's got those quill sprays, he's got the goo, he's got the damage, and that is gonna be killed onto the Sand King. Fada just getting behind that tower. Top lane is sacked for NIP. They will just need to play it safely. Bounty runes are spawning. EU will get uh, two on the left side of the map. Um, it's actually going to be three for one. Tim's just like not deciding to go for that bounty. Just uh, went for the other one instead. All right, well, whatever. He, he trades evenly. Uh, PPD does pick one up, though. Nice. He's, uh, he's not too afraid, though. His mana constantly being burned is a little bit annoying, but it's really not doing that much to him, honestly. Oh, oh, big oh, that's Nature's a great Wrath of Alt. And now, yeah, they get the kill. Saxa cleans it up with a claw. Shame that Deathbot wasn't able to sneak it with the... Uh, Med lane, though. Another good body blocks by these Treants. Yeah, this time they actually TP and Tim's just make sure the Death Prophet gets out. Still didn't see you. TP rotation from Nature's Prophet. He's just continuing to dominate his lane. He has 23 denies. That is a lot of denying he's got done. Meanwhile, 41 CS on the uh, oh, Burrow Strike in. Hasted Saxa comes flying into this bottom lane. Stun comes out as well. 33 though on the run. He's actually taking some hits here. He's got to go for the TP out. We'll be able to make it back to base and I don't think the uh, Fatal Bonds will do enough here. It's only level one. He's in the fountain. He's absolutely fine. Well, a blast thrown across the river. Purging off Saxa from whatever might be. Uh, Tim's actually going for the D-Ward here as they jump in onto Armel. Once again, 33, he's back, and that damage! Goodness me! That's gonna be a kill, and now Tim's getting blocked up by the trees. They've got the damage, the Spike Carapace comes out, but a Purifying Flames will put an end to this Nick Assassin's life. He gets his oranges juiced in the middle lane. There's an IP just still trying to farm up down here in the bottom lane. 35 and 11 right now, second in the CS chart, but look at this. Like, how has this Brutal got so much CS? I mean, he must be jungling as well, right? Yeah. And yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Definitely jungling. 33 so far. MVP of this match. These body blocks are actually insane. Yeah, dude. He is styling right now. 73 CS, huh? Yeah. Yeah, 73 CS didn't spawn on the whole map. All three lanes combined so far. <laughs> He's been hitting those neutrals, has full soul ring, infused raindrops to have unlimited mana sustain. Yeah, but with the kills, not a... Not anywhere close to 33 right now. Prophet just off to such a good start. What do you expect this Nature's Prophet to build this game? He will need to be their like, secondary carry, even though they have a DP, but DP's uh, not having a good time on a top lane and in the middle of CS chart. Ooh. Snake comes out in the mid lane. 
Uh, Fado will immediately bank off Puffalo's Beyond in the bottom lane. Tim's getting going on. 33 with the rotation. Down to the bot here. Leading in the tree. It's in here. Tim's, he's just sitting here. He's got the spike characters to come out. Well, he's at the very last second, but Ace will just grab it with that purge. Meanwhile, Cuckoo. He's just throwing down the fire right now. Ace is burning up pretty quickly, but he's got that one. The big root coming out to Cuckoo here. Looks like NIP aren't really too fussed about this Batrider kill. Still kind of looking to see if he sticks his head out of the trees anywhere, but that's not going to be the case, so Cuckoo will be absolutely fine. Come forward, though. Trees are out. Ace, he's there. He's got the pounce should he wants it. Just coming waiting through. it. Bow strike comes through, and Cuckoo will be dropped. And I'd be there just playing it patiently. And uh, with the treants coming out into the bottom lane here, this could even be a tier one tower this early on. Well, Ghost's actually popped in the mid lane. Fata, that's a big commitment. Not sure what's going on in the mid. Meanwhile, up at top, Saxa defending the tower the only way he's know how. From inside a standstorm. Sandstorm. Bottom tower has fallen. Slark has Shadow Blade queued up. Like, he needs to cut into back lines, find this Warlock. It's such an easy kill for him. Also, Nyx Assassin is if he just has the dust. Doesn't matter if he uses Care of Base, he can get out of pretty much any spell in this game with Dark Pact. Yeah, it's a great Dark Pact game. Great slot game all round, as has been mentioned and highlighted several times. Tim's, meanwhile, retreating from this middle lane. The Blast is coming out here. It's, uh, Seems a bit aggressive from Ninja in Pajamas with Gabby TPing in. That's going to mean they're going to be put onto the back foot a little bit here. 33, chilling out. Vanguard actually finished off on the Slark here. Meanwhile, Armel, he's just hit the jungle now. He's bored of laning. He doesn't want to do that anymore. Meanwhile, last two out onto the top lane. They've got themselves a Sand King. Dragging him back, but he gets a burst strike about two centimeters away, but it's out of the flames, but it's not out of the right oh, click. Cuckoo does three. connect. <sighs> just in the range to have vision of Sand King. 10 minute mark, which means uh, tomes will be purchased. Yeah, TNC doing pretty well this lane phase, but NIP actually with the gold advantage. Their, uh, their 33 profit is really doing work. And uh, Slark obviously with the free lane at bottom as well against that Batrider. And in comes Gabby, but uh, in comes Ace from behind. He wants to go and grab himself some stacks here, but. Uh, not going to happen, just defusing the situation, and Gabby gets straight back to farming. So, what did Gareth say on the, on the high ground by 15 minutes on the, uh, on the Bristleback? I don't remember, I'm not listening to what Gareth is saying. <laughs> That's wise. Well, in come the ghosts in the middle lane. Fada, he's got that exorcism coming through. And uh, go, try to go for the Nye, but doesn't quite happen. Oh, Arcane Rune Exorcism. Yeah, they didn't achieve anything with the first exorcism, but with the second one, they Ooh, managed ancients. to bring down tier one towers, steal some ancients. Ooh, medium creeps. <laughs> Fada, <laughs> just, just robbing the death prop, uh, robbing the Medusa of anything she wants. Meanwhile, up here at top, it is Saxa being stalked by Tim's. They're pinging out 33 here. This could be a go. There's a couple of heroes around. The Sprout comes out. Tim's, he's waiting. He wants to get his team into position for this one first. He has the golem. He wants to throw down the rock, but they're holding back. I feel like that was a kill for TNC right there, but they got a little bit spooked. Surprisingly quiet early game. I say that. There's been a, there's actually been a lot of kills. A lot of kills, yeah, but... Uh, it's all because of the nature's profit. Now we didn't see too much action happening in the past few minutes. Everybody just wants to farm, especially Medusa, because she did not have a good laning stage. Yeah, Slark just waiting for that Shadow Blade before he really starts getting involved all up in TMT's business. And he has it. It's 12 minute Power wow. Threads Shadow Blade. This is a game of very, very rich heroes. We're going to see some engagements looking like the like mid-game engagements at like the 15-minute mark. I'm really afraid for TNC's late game once the Slark gets big. They only managed to kill him one time for first blood. It doesn't really matter. But uh, if he starts building stats, items, uh, Echo Saber, he gets that Scotty. Like there, there's no way they can burst him, especially since he has Oracle sitting behind him. Yeah, but Gabby's gonna hit his peak before the Slark hits theirs. What can TNC do around that? 
Virus track actually coming in. They're, they're just gonna try and fight him right now, but it's actually a bait as Ace comes through on the back lines here. Mino A holding back the golem, but he has got it. Gonna drop it onto three heroes. Give him stunned up for a little bit now with that golem smashing into him now. Fada, he's taking damage, but immediate ultimate comes out from PPD to save him from the lasso. And now Ace back himself away. They uh, managed to bait out a lot here at IP. They, they get the Golem, which is a big win for them. Golem and Lasso, now they can start playing aggressively. Also, they have two Invis heroes, Sanking and Slark, which means that the, a lot of resources from supports will need to be in these center wards to actually see them. Especially against Slark, and this is, that's a huge buff to Slark, being limited to 10 sentry wards. Yeah, he, he's, he's a hero which likes to play the map. There is a sentry ward here. Ace staying just out of range. And she just oh, decides to steal that wolf. Yeah, the small one Grab at that. Grab that gold. He's a... <laughs> oh, whatever. It's a flex. So again, coming up on the 15 minute mark, runes should be spawning. And I imagine that's the next time we're going to see a real fight taking place. Until then, it's just going to be posturing and coming at each other. I mean, no one really has any big initiations so we have those big daggers. And the way you play with Slark, you give him sentry wards, he just destroyed one obs because of the Shadow Dance, he can see where the ward is, has a Quelling Blade to kill it instantly. Yep. Very nice, Meanwhile, little Armel, trying to go for some farm here. And you should see him, but PPD is actually coming in from behind. Tim's gets the no beautiful stun on to it, immediately PPD is finished off. Death Prophet turned to stone, but they're a little bit afraid of going in on this one, especially with that Wrath of Nature ripping through. TNC will have to back themselves off to the tier two tower. But, uh... Failed gank from NIP there, and actually Gabby wrapping around onto Ace. They've got the sentry down as well, and they just give her game away immediately by throwing down this uh, viscous nasal goo. Chasing Ace. Gabby, he's just uh, he's just going to keep those quills from coming here. I'm getting the same feeling as in the previous uh, game where... He's followed him the whole way. Nice Shadow Blade's now run out. Cuckoo's trying to get on top, but a beautiful burst strike from Sax is going to hold them out for the time being. That's three bounty runes going to NIP. They're up onto the high ground. Now the lasso comes out. PPD can't get in range for the false promise. There, finally gets himself in. Sax, uh, he's counting up the epicenter. He wants to help his team fight this one as a burst strike onto the high ground. Meanwhile, PPD already dead. Doesn't look like there's any saving for Sax either, so it does just end up two heroes going down for that one. Gabby going pretty mental right now. Still looking for Ace, but finally will TP himself down to bottom to deal with the push that's coming in there. I was talking about the same feeling uh, from the previous game where TNC understands their timings. Uh, Gabby is extremely farmed right now and they want to take these fights. Well, NIP will need to dodge a little bit to get that profit to, to level 12. And she is going for that Aghanim Scepter, first item. Yeah, that's what, we, that's what we've seen a lot of. Uh, this stop for a Void Stone, casual Void Stone, getting that mana regen allows her to spam out Crypt Swarm a little bit more and farm that Acceptor a little bit faster. And also we'll probably be going for duels afterwards, that makes a lot of sense. So... In on the 16 minute mark, approaching 20 minutes in and still no real advantage. We're getting flashbacks of game number one, but this time NIP do seem to be a little bit further in the driving seat. I don't know, this Medusa ca definitely can't fight into these heroes late game, right? Yes, she can, especially with the, once she hits that level 15 with extra percentage on Mana Snake Steel, Fata. Uh, he's uh, being dropped pretty quickly, but actually PPD comes in with the saves and that is going to force back TNC for the time being. So again, no kill actually taking place. This is going to be a huge problem that Nyx Assassin has a point in Mana Burn and that level 15 on Medusa will cripple a lot of their heroes. Meanwhile, in the top lane, there's uh, Nature's Prophet being chased by a Batrider, but uh, with the TPs coming in to help out as well. I feel like this is just about Ryder drawing attention away from the other parts of the game. He's not really looking for a kill here. He's just looking to kind of ruffle NIP's feathers a little bit and get them to respond to him. He's just an attention grabber. Meanwhile, Lasso does actually come out. They've managed to get the Nature's Prophet here. This should be a kill. 33 is going to go down. It's a fair bounty going the way of uh, the TNC. Slark will just uh, shrink away in the background, though. No extra pickoffs here. NIP should try to take a fight to get a pick off. Saxa has that blink dagger, DP level 2 ulti is ready. But Slark is running low on mana. And he had Silver Edge queued up, understands that he needs some mana region item, instantly queues up Echo Saber. Yeah, 
a pretty standard item for Slark. Gives you that nice mana regen, which he sorely needs. And uh, helps you just get those uh, two essence shifts rolling in. Meanwhile, down in the bottom lane, Gabby just hitting a tower. Slark's are going to come in, try and defend. Sandstorm will be enough to force back the Bristleback. It's a free Slar game, but it's also a free Bristleback game because they have uh, no ways of like countering him until Slark gets big. Because he can tank through all the damage that NIP can throw at him. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a stalemate right now because, you know, the Bristol can do what he wants, but at the same time doesn't want to do that much because Medusa is still farming. It's a time they want to wait for. I think it's just NIP just waiting for their items and deciding when they're going to strike. They might want this DP Axe first. She's only a thousand gold off, farmed very efficiently. That's a... Well, Tim's just giving them that information all the time. And suddenly, after spending some time in the triangle, Medusa is on top of network. She is level 15, that 45% uh, mana snake steal is going to hurt NIP so much. Yeah, yeah, that's it's a, it's a big talent. And a uh, big worry for NIP, they need to make sure that their Death Prophet and their Slark are nowhere near that. I think you can kind of afford for it to be hit on to the nature's profit a bit, but I mean, ideally, you know, it's just it's just a super annoying spell. Sorry, we still didn't see you. 20 minutes in, we didn't see a full team fight. No, no, we haven't. The, the team's just very much avoiding each other. I feel like it's, it's all on NIP. Like, NIP just need to decide when they want to go. They're, they're the ones who, you know, will lose when it gets to the super late game. Uh, if, if things keep it, keep this even, the Medusa will be a monster. Oh, they were trying to bait. They had the vision. Sentry Ward was there. Even after Warlock placed that Observer Ward, they wanted to bait something out of it. Now they got rid of that Observer Ward. Meanwhile, on the mid lane, Bristleback with Shadow Ward on him, Pipe and the uh, Vanguard, he feels pretty unkillable. Probably with good reason as well. And this tier two tower is just going to take a full here. Still no response. I mean, are NAP looking for pick offs? Are they, look are they trying to find like small kills across the map to try and get their Slark snowballing? Because they're not finding them. There are not many kills they can find. Like Bristleback yeah. and Medusa are extremely tanky right now. So they can try to pick off a Warlock, maybe a Nyx Assassin. But Nyx Assassin spends a lot of his time in Vendetta, just trying to scout things out. No, I'm just spending time under the tier twos now, realizing how strong he is. Ace trying to do the same thing here in the middle lane of Fortify will come out to keep those creeps alive as Gabby taking these guys for a run in the mid lane as well. TNC, they're all set up here, but they're gonna try and TP into the shrine and go for something here. But Tim, oh, he found we'll Warlock. See, but, oh, hey, you, this is a huge target get. Gonna have to throw it down the stun immediately as Slark is able to rip through the wall's defenses. Let's get off that chaotic offering. And now Armel going for the TP up, but Saks are in with a stun. Beautiful Burrow Strike immediately getting lassoed up. There is not gonna be any save coming in from him anytime soon. BPD trying to close the gap, but can't cast the spell. Quite in time was been animation. Actually, Gabby just comes in from behind and murders him. He's dead, but they get to come to the Armel and now they look forward onto 33. 33 with the trees, with the TPs, will be able to get himself okay. But Fada, he's just chasing forward right now. He's got Nagonim Zepter and he is not afraid to use it. But in comes the Impale from Tim's to just keep him back for the time being. But 33 is back in. He's got that Sprout. Fada with the Ghost coming in as well. Ace at the Shadow Blade coming, get back into the fight, and Tim's will be taken down. Ace, he wasn't looking for anybody else though, so he's they're, they're just gonna have to settle with the ones they got. Still, a kill onto the Medusa is really, really big for an IP. Perfect rotation from Ace. He was farming bottom, TP's on Shrine, and finds Warlock. They need to invest in a lot of centers to protect the Warlock because they don't have any defensive items right now. And this Spirit Vessel on Nature's Prophet doing so much against Medusa. She can't lifesteal uh, because she doesn't have any. Uh, <laughs> and it's good against Bristleback because they have no ways of dispelling it. Like, look look at his uh, HP region, 27. Yeah. It's that'll really kind of hold him back, the Spirit Vessel. All right, well, NIP proving they can fight, but what do they want to do with this? Right now, it seems like they're just kind of Divaricating and farming. Ace with the Shadow Blade out. Just uh, hanging out into the middle lane. Takes a couple of pings here. Gabby? He's in Roshan, but Ace saw the whole thing. He's just going to sit in here with him. And uh, we'll just kind of start smashing away into this uh, into this bristle here, but got to be careful a little bit. I mean, one of the middle lane, they actually find the kill onto Saxa. Is that Lasso? Yeah, Lasso was used. Um, but another Sanking Dead, this actually Roshan becomes very possible with the anti-armor for the Viscous Nasal Goo from the Medallion. It's, it's full Solar Crest and Goo. Oh. 
Minus 16 armor on Roche. See you later. A big NIP step forward for DNT. Yeah, NIP will try to look into these prolonged team fights where Slark will get the most out of it. Like, they're not gonna fully commit. Try to play around Lasso, Vorlocks, uh, Rock, and uh, try to pop that ulti on Medusa, fall back, then re-engage. Yeah, that is going to be the plan. It's a tricky one to pull off. They did manage it last time, but this time around might not be so easy. Meanwhile, top net worth spot is very, very tight between the Bristleback, the Medusa, and this Nature's Prophet. Medusa currently sitting, going towards that Ioscati. And uh, actually has enough money for it right now if she wants it. Probably. Yeah, it's time to buy it. You have. Yeah. Ages, you don't need to save for a buyback. There's really no use of it right now. Saxa with the good positioning. They have Observer and the Sentry Ward, but maybe he's standing a bit too close. He could be hit by Quill Spray. Oh, Bristleback with Arcane Rune. The dream. Ooh, the NIP do not want to fight into this. They absolutely do not want to go anywhere near this fight. I said, though, Saxa's in a good position. Slark's rotating himself in. There's a couple of ghosts coming out. They don't want to go on Medusa nor Bristleback. They need to find surprise Nyx Assassin. Ideally, once again, it would be a Warlock, but the EU placed an Observer Ward and by side to have the full vision of this area. Meanwhile, Cuckoo gets the solo kill up on the top lane onto 33. There's a very poor Batrider killing a very, very rich Nature's Prophet. Meanwhile, they found themselves Sand King. Sand King in the side here. Fire Strike comes out. Pale. And now comes in the lasso and just dragging it back through the flames. And Armel takes himself an easy one there. Yeah, this should not happen. TNC is uh, doing a really good job. Wait, Cuckoo having this boots of travel. Nature's Prophet TPs to one side. And he's just holding that lasso because he knows that if he uses a TP, he's dead. Well, now 25 minutes into this game and NIP, they've uh, come, basically turned up to one fight so far. I need that voice line. You know what's cooking, boom, when I'm playing yeah. techies. Yeah, yeah, you, you throw it mid, mid air. Meanwhile, they've got the yules out, but Fada could be the one in some serious trouble right now. The ghost slowing them down, but not a whole lot, and not enough life steal either, even with the life drain coming in. Oh, never mind. Okay, there's a false promise coming in, but they just throw down the oil golem coming down. PPD trying to run himself away, but he's not going to be lasting much longer. Meanwhile, Fada, he does actually get healed up by all of this. They thought he was dead, so they turned their backs on him, but Fada going for the TP out. There is too much damage coming through, though, and Armel will finish him off with a few right clicks. Meanwhile, Cuckoo finds Saxa. Another solo kill. Cuckoo, what are you doing? And I please, it feels like they're not on the same page. They're out of ideas. Yeah. And yeah, the TNC is playing so well. There was a really nice rock in the back lines. Also, the amount of physical damage right now that Medusa deals with a couple of goo charges, stacks, not and uh, the one. solar crest. Not another one. 33 will not make it away. Cuckoo is just an absolute assassin on this bat rider right now, and in come the tips. Ninjas in pajamas, they've fallen apart. Who could, who could have seen this coming, Lacoste? Yeah, that's, that's a lot of uh, battle points for 33. You'd, you'd have to be some kind of clairvoyant to see all this happening. <laughs> <laughs> You're being a, a savage, that's usually me, but um, I'm more PC these days. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, you're rubbing off on me. Bottom tower is starting to fall. Cuckoo on the hunt. He's looking on the back lines That's here. That's buyback. Suddenly he is 33, getting back into this fight. Ace has the BKB going, looking for Armel right now. The Mantis comes out from Armel, but he still cuts through. The Epicenter ripping through as well. No one seems to be dropping right now as A will successfully TP out. Ace, though, he is falling low, and he gets turned into stone inside that ultimate sack that has fallen. And now that Ace still looking in some more. He's managing to get himself about 13 essence shifts, but it's not really enough for them to actually take this fight. The Ghost's doing a fair amount of work, and TNC will be forced out for the time being, but they're the ones who got a kill into the Epicenter and into the Ghosts, and now they're just coming straight back in again here. Medusa not really scared about still this right now. Still has Aegis. Still has the Aegis, still running forwards, and there's a Fatal Bonds coming out as well. They've got to be careful about this. Fada, he's taking too much damage. The healing from the Ghost is actually hurting his team right now, but Yules will purge it off. So he's basically saying, I'm going to die. Might as well get rid of this uh, buff so I don't kill my team as well. Meanwhile, Medusa will eventually fall. Cuckoo, though, on top of Fada right now, and Medusa is back with that Eye of Scatty. Fada gets blown up. PPD as well. He's going to have to use a False Promise onto himself. Ace jumping away from this one. It doesn't look like a way for Slark to actually get 
in and maintain his damage inside of these fights. PPD implodes from all of that damage from Gabby right there. The racks are open. The second lane are going down. NIP, they, they don't have any answers right now. Armel is too strong. Gabby just sticking on the front lines. All of this split damage coming off and NIP that for one more barracks remaining. They're not going to GG out because they need to stay alive for as long as possible due to the time coefficient. They know this. The bro strike comes through here. Ace jumping in onto Armel, trying to blow down the producer as quickly as possible with that BKB coming in. He's just stealing stats. It's a lot of stacks. Stealing stats. stats. He's getting shift. bigger and bigger. But unfortunately, he's still just not doing enough. But finally, the ultimate comes out. 49, 50, still going. And Armel is actually going to drop here. Ace is doing something at least. PPD just trying to keep himself alive so that he can help out Ace. Meanwhile, Kuko on the back lines finds a kill onto Saxa, but Ace, he's getting a little bigger and bigger. He's still, still just eating through these heroes. Gabby going for the TP out, and the Yule's going to make sure that is safely done. Oh, sadly for him, he did not have bounce. He needed half of a second there to stop that TP. Has 51 Essence Shift stacks. That's a lot. And still, I mean, they, they kill the Medusa, which is good. But, I mean, at this point in the game, with two barracks down, in a team when you don't have the Medusa and you're heading into the late game. It's uh, not looking ideal though. Look at the damage coming through onto the Bat Rider. Tim's invised up on the run. Chasing forward, smoke comes out. They need these prolonged fights, but the problem is Bristleback has a lot of physical damage, they just focus the tower. If something goes bad, they can throw the rock in. Uh, same goes for Medusa ulti. They have like multiple ways of uh, saving a team fight. 47 essence shift charges. Slark is on the hunt. He's trying, isn't he? But with that shadow wave running out, doesn't find anybody. Meanwhile, Tim's may possibly be a target. Ace pops the dust, trying to grab Tim's here, but Tim's just runs him around a tree. No problems at all there. Easy jukes. You know what's cooking? Boom! You know what's cooking? Who's enjoying the voice line? They you? are having a lot of fun with this uh, chat wheel sanking top lane. Yeah, they're like gonna sex. throw oh the rock God. to kill the sanking. Well, now, you, now you've got a golem. They know he push. has no buyback. That's why they use the rock. Yeah. And Sanking is their damage in a team fight plus control. So much gone. I mean, they were pushing high ground with all five of them up. And now with the Sanking dead for 30 seconds, they're going to be looking for these trees right now. 33, he's going to spawn in some trees and try and push them in here. But they'll probably just get shredded by the Medusa rather quickly here. As she continues to hit up these barracks. Ace coming in, is seen. Yule's up as well. Not allowing to get that pounce, get that initiation. Still looking forward to Armel here. BKB pop. He's dropping so quickly. He's got no HP. Still running forwards onto AU. Trying to find some kind of target. The Exism also popped. That Bolt Golem keeping the team back pretty heavily here. 33 just trying to smash into it, but not really doing a whole lot of damage. Damage. Exorcism Ghosts going to work, but the TNC just turning this one around the Quip, so I'm going to throw in an extra couple of Ghosts here, slow them down, heal up the Medusa, uh, sorry, heal up the Death Prophet a little bit further, but it's just TNC going to town. Now Saxa is back, Burrow Strike through into two, and just as quickly as he came back into the fight, he is just completely dead again. TNC, they will take the barracks. Mega Creeps now belong to TNC. They keep on going though, Fada trying to get back to the base right now. He's rocking the slow, slow run as Fada, Ace, PPD, they're all taken down. 33 inside the fountain, just holding on for as long as possible here. Suck controlled up and finished off. Gabby is godlike and they are into the fountain right now. And there's a GG being called by PPD. The game is over. NIP lose 2-0 to TNC. What a nice performance by TNC. I underestimated the them and their draft, it feels like they understand their timing so well. They had Medusa who didn't have a good laning stage, but the uh, Bristleback was the tanky one. He was the frontliner and uh, she just fell back to that triangle, farmed yeah. farmed some creeps, hit the ancients, and uh, once again, they group up as five. They're not afraid. I feel like NIP really didn't have a game to play with.